Insurance, serving Guam for 80 years. Matson and the Adai Tano Program. Harley Davidson of Guam, visit our new showroom, now located on Route 8 in Mighty. IP&E, fueling excellence. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And King's Restaurant, located in Timuning and Dededo. Always open, always local. Ahead on primetime, a threat at a local middle school has parents upset. Carmen Talahi has the details from the Agate campus. Plus, some heated moments on session floor as the debate continued into the evening on Bill 350. Chris Barnett with the recap. And Governor Eddie Calvo reflects on his last eight years in office as he comes to the end of his time at Adelaide. Half a day and good evening. A threat made to shoot up a local middle school has pa parents outraged, many even choosing to keep their children home today. Those parents saying the apparent threat came from another student. They are now pleading with Guam DOE leaders to take action to keep their children safe. Carmen Salai has tonight's top story. It's been an emotional day for parents at Ocean View Middle School. I'm a parent and I don't want to have to hear that I will lose my child because of one child that wants to harm people in that school. Her stomach was in knots, fearing for her child's safety. Brenda Acavera is a parent of a seventh grader at Ocean View Middle School in Agate. She spoke up at a PTO meeting Tuesday night where nearly 50 parents raised concern over a classmate of their children who threatened to bring weapons, harm a teacher, and allegedly shoot up the school. Acavera says she's been aware of the threats since December 5th. There was a petition going around because everyone is a concern for their safety. The staff are like walking in eggshells basically too. So um, uh, what I did was I signed a petition but only to find out after his suspension he's back on campus. His presence worrying other parents like Trisha Rosalind who says the threat was quote severe and serious especially with a high number of school shootings resulting in tragedy on the mainland. She says suspension just isn't good enough. And a lot of parents last night felt that more should be done. We're not saying to, to kick the student out, you know, and just let him go wherever. He needs help as well. They're all worried, especially because the teachers are also worried about their safety. And they're the ones who are caring for our children. At the PTO meeting last night, many parents were concerned. In fact, early Wednesday morning, they didn't bring their kids to Ocean View Middle School. A lot of kids didn't go to school today, yeah. But my son chose to not live in fear. He went to school, he has exams. He wants to just carry on like nothing is happening, you know, but I told him to stay alert. Yeah, do the Alice drill, the um, alert lockdown, um, you know, because Anything can happen. I mean, it can happen at school, the mall, their field trip on Friday. I don't know. You know, it's, it's reality. And I'm hoping that the superintendent does something because we've been voicing out the best we could at the PTO last night. You had parents yelling. Acavera is just one of many parents who signed another petition for the superintendent to rescind his decision and expel the student. CDOE did release a statement saying, though the superintendent did not attend the meeting, two DOE officials were in attendance adding that any threats are taken seriously and, quote, investigated thoroughly and assessed based on a risk assessment protocol, end quote, adding that the superintendent has directed student attendance officers to provide support and monitoring of the front gates. Reporting for Guamzi's Network, I'm Carmen Victoria Terlaki. Thanks, Carmen. Well, Tamiling Elementary School is placed on a brief lockdown after a threat made this afternoon, Guam Department of Education spokesperson Issa Baza saying the lockdown started around 2.20 this afternoon after a staff member received the threat. Details, however, have not yet been released. Guam police officers responded to the campus. The all clear was given just after 2.30 p.m. GDOE is investigating. He apparently had a verbal contract with a teen girl known to him. Court documents state the 14-year-old told police that she could avoid being grounded and get something she wanted if she submitted to sexual intercourse with Gerard King of Pangilinan. The most recent incident occurred last month. Pangilinan was arrested and charged with first-degree criminal sexual conduct as a first-degree felony. He made repeated calls to police before he was placed under arrest. 29-year-old Javencio Romo Camacho was arrested and charged with possession of a Schedule II controlled substance and making a false report. 
Court documents state he called police about barking dogs and men banging on his windows and doors. He also reported that men were outside his house waving guns. When police arrived, there were no such threats. A search of the home revealed a glass pipe and suspected drugs. He later admitted that he bought the drug ice earlier in the week, smoked some of it, and hadn't slept in days. Senators spent most of yesterday debating, debating Bill 350, and while the debate was heated, so were tempers. Chris Barnett has an in-depth look in this report. To pay or not to pay, that was the question. Bill 350, a bill Senator Dennis Rodriguez says would right a past wrong by paying Coca Recycling $590,000 a year for the next 10 years. The money would come from Guam EPA's revolving recycling fund, and Rodriguez said it would pay Coca Recycling back for work it did 17 years ago. Was there a valid contract for Coco to pick up some 25,000 metric tons of metallic waste in 2001? Why didn't the company go the normal route and sue the government for what they say they're owed? So many questions. The initial statement from the Attorney General's office was that their opinion is that this piece of legislation is inorganic and unconstitutional. Panelists from the AG's office brought before senators even questioned the bill's validity to the embarrassment of Rodriguez and Senator Mike Zanicholas, who chaired the proceedings. We think is outside the, the zone of safety when it comes to uh, a separation of powers. When it became clear the panelists' answers weren't always going to make Bill 350 look so good, Zanicholas started to try and limit what could be asked and answered on the session floor, even telling panelists not to answer certain questions asked by his colleagues. Senator Talina Nelson tried to ask Deputy AG Ken Orcutt if the AG's office thought Coco Recycling had a valid license agreement. Well, the license agreement may not be valid. We've never looked into that question. Uh, but at the time that this lease or uh, license point, point agreement... Point of order, Mr. Orcutt, I believe the question was what is the process by which a claim can be Actually, properly I, filed? Mr. Chair, I, 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 I respect the road he's... he's the path that he's taking, he's bringing a lot of things into the light for the public. So if you would allow him to continue. And the, the concern is that um, we're not here to, we can have lawyers debating each other all day as to what their interpretations I are. I think Mr. we need to be Chair. very specific as to the questions. So Mr. There, Rucker, if, if you can stay focused on the initial question. There was two question. things, Mr. Chair, that he was bringing up. Please allow him to speak. Orcutt went on to say the proper channel for Coca Recycling to get paid the $7.5 million they say they're owed would be to file a claim and go to court. But answers, and even questions, were very hard to come by. Acting Speaker Therese Terlahi protesting San Nicholas's attempts to control what panelists could and couldn't say. I would ask that we just be allowed to ask them the questions. They be allowed to answer without your, your directing them how to answer. Terlahi had been trying to ask GIPA head Walter Leon Guerrero if paying Koku $590,000 a year for 10 years would hamper GIPA's ability to protect our paradise since the money would come from GIPA's revolving recycling fund. Removing money from the fund does not enable us to ex expend it on our draft rules and rigs. The whole point of this is to get information. You're going to ask us to vote on a bill, and then you're going to restrict us from getting the information. I just say, let it, let it flow freely. I mean, why, why such efforts to censor what they can or cannot uh, say? For, for, first of all, Madam Speaker, there's no censorship. And I, don't, I think you need to, maybe you need a there's motion no, no in no order to Madam start Speaker. limiting the testimony. There's no censorship in, in this um, community of the whole. Later in the evening, Sir Nicholas asked his colleagues to add amendments to Bill 350, and when Terlahi objected, the gavel came down again. It's very hard to pass any amendment right now because we only have eight people here, and it's very clear where their allegiances are lying. But I would like to ask that... I think, Speaker, you will refrain from making comments about our colleagues Mr. in such a manner. Mr. Chair, Please you have cut me off your... from asking questions of the panel. You've cut me off from the middle of my questions think, Speaker, when they were here. you have the floor respect to amendment on 350. You will not recess us till the rest of the members are here, so... Terlai said if Coco had filed a claim and gone to court, legislative relief could be a solution to remedy the issue. Since that hasn't been done, Terlai said senators shouldn't be afraid to play the Grinch if it means saving Gov Guam seven and a half million dollars. And I know it's Christmas time, but I don't see every any single reason why we are going to play Santa Claus with the people's money. For Guam's News Network, Chris Barnett reports. Even if senators have more questions than answers, Bill 350 was moved to the third reading file. 
A send-off ceremony was held today for the 35 Guam National Guard airmen set to deploy in support of Operation Freedom Sentinel and Operation Inherent Resolve later this month. Members of the 254th Air Base Group, the 254th Security Force Squadron, and the 254th Four support squadron were joined by family, friends, and fellow comrades during the ceremony. The Guard says this deployment will once again have a significant impact on our Air Guard component. We'll stick around for more news here on Primetime. You're watching KUAM. There are more ways to experience Guam via KUAM News, giving you what you want, when you want, and how you want it. From smart devices, Alexa, what's in the news? Here's your flash briefing. Over the web, on mobile, on streaming platforms, with immersive, interactive formats, and via social media where it's more than just content, it's conversation. More ways to keep you informed and entertained whenever you want it, wherever you are, on whatever device you're using. Cheers to 80 years! It's our 80th anniversary and the gifts are on us. 80 gift certificates, 8 shopping sprees, 8 staycations, and 1 round trip flyaway for 2 to Manila. So how do you enter? Cavos Insurance personal home and auto customers are automatically entered. Non-Cavos customers may enter by receiving a qualified quote. It's our way of saying thank you for trusting us for the past 80 years. For more details, visit Cavos.com slash giveaway or call 472-6816. Cavos Insurance, serving Guam for 80 years. Be merry, be bright, and make shopping all right with holiday gift cards from Chuck E. Cheese's Guam, Ruby Tuesday, and King's Restaurants. Receive special offers with every purchase for extra holiday happiness. See stores for details and have fun this season from all of us at the GFS Group. MTO, professional janitorial services with a warm hospitality touch. MTO gives that gift year-round. Pressure wash roofs, pressure wash driveways, lawn service, home cleaning, carpet restoration, office cleaning, commercial cleaning, commercial window cleaning, floor care. When cleaning is in order, MTO has you covered. Call 647-6861 to inquire on how you can receive the maintenance you deserve. MTO, celebrating 30 years with you, Guam. Hoffman, welcome back. His eight years in office is coming to an end. Governor DeCavo and his staff are packing up and getting Adeloupe ready for the incoming administration. Chris, an emotional time for his administration as they say their goodbyes tonight. Cavo reflects on the past two terms since he led the territory. Inside the governor's chambers at Adeloupe. Feeling uh, a sense of relief in terms of uh, um, uh, some of the responsibilities that have been, you know, being a part of being a governor for the past eight years. A calm but bittersweet feeling as Guam Governor Eddie Calvo thinks back on his years of public service and the things he's going to miss. That decision making and how it may assist improving the quality of life of people, uh, that is now given uh, through the democratic process to a, a new a governor. Governor Calvo walked us around Adeloupe as he met with his staff who helped him through it all. You know, it's amazing when I look back at eight years, it's how fast it went. Right? But then I think about some of the real difficult times, huh? and it usually came in very, whether it's a North Korea incident, yeah. whether it was that first year crisis where we had the $300 million deficit, it, it appeared that the seconds were going in slow motion. Really? So in some di really difficult times, it sure seems that time slows down. And then, of course, in the, the times of joy, it goes too fast. His staff being one of the things he's most proud of. We were a team. You know, one of the things about being a big government, well, depending on what size is relative, right? right. But for, you know, for a government where under my purview, there's about 7,500 employees, uh, total Gov Guam, 11,900, close to 12,000 employees. Um, it's important to, you know, you know, to, for all the limbs of the body to be working in unison. And so uh, I think uh, for me, because of our limited resources, uh, starting out with the $300 million deficit 
and shortages in staff and, and uh, equipment and a lot of things in different agencies. We worked as a team. A team that was at the helm during the payout of tax refunds, the building of the Guam Museum, Ancelon Middle, Tizen High, the demolition of the DOA building, and subsidizing GMH, to name a few. What's the legacy that you want the people of Guam to remember you by? Worked from day one to the last day. Worked my best for the people of Guam. And I left the island in better shape, and I'm talking the government and the island, than when, I, when, than when it was when I came in. Calvo says he will spend more time with family and go back to working in the private sector. I'm going to miss this place right here. Or I can still come back, maybe not as governor, but I'll come back here and enjoy. And his message to the people? It's indeed been an honor uh, serving you, the people of Guam. Uh, the thousands of people I've met and served as governor, it just reinforces my view uh, that uh, this is a great people living in a great island. God bless the people of Guam. I love you all. There's so much more Governor Cavill shared during that exit interview. You can check it out on KUAM.com as well as on our social media platforms. Manawars are back. According to Johnny Mayor Jesse Bloss, four residents have been stung by that jellyfish at the Tagatsing Beach. Tagatsing Beach. Each was transported to the Johnny Fire Station for treatment. Beachgoers are advised not to touch any jellyfish. Even dead ones may still sting you should you get stung. You're advised to remove any tentacles using a stick, credit card, or something hard to take them off before flushing the affected area with salt water and take a pain reliever if needed. With regional headlines, here's KSPN 2 News. Half a day Guam, here are the top headlines for CNMI. A complaint has been filed in federal court today, bringing tort claims of seven Chinese construction workers that were injured while working for Gold Mantis Construction Decoration, LLC. According to the court documents of the complaint, Gold Mantis Construction Decoration, LLC, is one of the firms hired to construct the Imperial Pacific Casino, employing about 500 Chinese construction workers for the casino worksite, making the workers pay, quote, large recruitment fees based on promises of good jobs in Saipan, end quote. The complaint states that the firm, quote, forced them to labor for long hours for below minimum wage under extremely dangerous conditions, end quote. The complaint also states that all of the plaintiffs suffered some type of physical injury while working for Gold Mantis from a burnt leg, scalded hand, and partially severed finger, and that the company would not take the workers to the hospital, nor would they allow them to go on their own as they, quote, keep hidden their own illegal practices, end quote. A settlement was reached by Gold Mantis with the U.S. Department of Labor, agreeing to pay millions of dollars to the plaintiffs and their co-workers for violations during their employment. The five prayer for relief are general damages, special damages, and punitive damages to be proven at trial. The cost of the suit and any other relief seen by the court. The complaint states that the seven plaintiffs are seeking compensation from the Gold Mantis for the damages from the injuries they incurred while working for them and that they demand a trial by jury. KSPN is waiting for a response from the attorney handling this case. For more news, visit SiapanTV.com. For KSPN 2, I'm Ashley McDowell. It's a show you'll fall in love with. Mamma Mia is worldwide sensation <laughs> set to the iconic songs of Swedish pop group ABBA. If you haven't seen the Broadway musical, you may have seen the movie adaption that came out in 2008. Now the show is coming to Guam. Here's more. ABBA lovers unite. Mamma Mia is coming to Guam this spring. Gay teacher and director Ernest Achoco is calling all actors, singers, dancers, and theater lovers to join the fun. The auditions are uh, Thursday and Friday, this Thursday and Friday, tomorrow, uh, <laughs> and Saturday, Sunday. So. Mamma Mia is a long time coming for gay teachers Ray Twenter and Ann Gorby, who first asked for rights to the show nearly two decades ago. So many people have been waiting for this show to happen, and it's really an amazing experience to be part of something that's bigger than yourself. And, you know, it, this is going to sound really antiseptic, but 100% of the proceeds goes back to the community. And what that means is when we do this type of an event, 
uh, the gate theater um, or whatever else, what happens is we raise each other up. And that's the most important thing. Mamma Mia follows a young woman who was raised by a single mother in her journey to finding her father. On the eve of her wedding, she invites three men who she believes one of whom could be her dad to her big day. It definitely is a show that's for the entire family and it's about family. So absolutely everyone will take something away and relate to this, this, uh, this production. All ages, six years old to Manamku are encouraged to audition. If you're 17 and under, bring mom or dad. You'll need their permission to participate. We're very inclusive, so we invite every single person that wants to come and experience the, the power of theater, the power of the fine arts. There are 11 main roles. Um, three of them are adult women and three of them are, are adult men. And then we have four that are uh, young teens. Um, so, and then we've got a whole bunch of villager roles that, are, that have vignettes and uh, little solos and things like that within the, the chorus and the ensemble. Ready to get to work, theater lover Ray Ray Julian is one of the show's stage managers. The 18-year-old was most recently an ensemble member in Gates' Cinderella. I learned a lot of things. I learned teamwork, how to work with others, um, the ability to have and gain more confidence in myself, to be able to go on that stage and prove to myself that you know I'm comfortable and I can perform in front of hundreds and thousands of people. And you just kind of take away a lot from that. Auditions are Thursday and Friday at 6.30 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday at 3 p.m. at the Guam Department of Education Main Building in Tizen. Come ready to dance and ready to sing one Broadway or Disney song. Don't forget to bring your backing track. Chris, you already got your vocals warmed up for that one? Oh, yes. Yeah? How's it go? Mama, Mama Mia. Mia. Here, Here I, I go, go again. That's as far as I know. Sorry. <laughs> We're singing in different keys. I'm sure you guys know the rest. Let's, let's get sports. More. to earn reward points using the Alpha Plus app. Here, let me show you. Simply register with the all new Alpha Plus app and earn reward points while making purchases at your favorite stores you already shop at. Just present the app to any authorized representative to earn your points. Now that was easy. Alpha Plus, make every day a plus. This year is rapidly coming to an end, and the big finish is now on at Cars Plus and Mighty. Get big year-end deals on a big selection of new Ram trucks with savings up to $10,500. Or save up to $5,500 on a new Chrysler Pacifica. How about a new Jeep Compass? Save up to $5,000. With financing as low as 1.99%. Plus, receive a Cars Plus Shell Value Card with every vehicle purchase. The big finish means big savings right now at Cars Plus and Mighty. Cars Plus, driven by you. Here's to the flavorful. Those unafraid to show their signature style, signature moves, signature everything. You add the spice that makes life interesting. So to you, we raise a sandwich as flavorful as you are for McDonald's signature crafted recipes. Try the new savory creamy mushroom and Swiss burger, part of the signature crafted recipes lineup only at McDonald's. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J.
All right, tonight on Sports, we're going to meet a young man whose passion for martial arts started at a very young age. 21-year-old Austin Petrus is gearing up for his next international fight. He shares his journey with KUAM Sports over at the Guam Muay Thai Boxing Gym in Manila in the few short months leading up to the big event in Japan. A jab here and a kick there. Training has been non-stop for Austin Petros. Um, I'm feeling like in shape and by the time I, by the time the fight comes up, you know, I know I'll be ready, I'll be confident. This MMA and Muay Thai fighter spent the last two summer months competing in Thailand. He even took home the win this past summer. I just like it. I like the grind. His next big fight is set for February in Japan. So he's been doing pretty good. His striking's been looking pretty game. He's been evolving since the first time I've actually seen him fight. And if there's anyone who knows just how ready Austin is, it's one of his coaches, Wes. Um, Austin's a real quiet guy. You know, he's very humble in those kind of aspects. He's very like, he lets his uh, work do the talking instead of the mouth, you know. An opportunity for him to evolve as an athlete. Helps build up your cardio, helps build, helps build character in a way and, you know, humbles yourself. And, you know, you have a lot of fun with it, make a lot of friends too. Mm -hmm. So you build a family too as well. But his love for the sport goes back to his younger years. I used to watch a lot of uh, martial arts movies and stuff, and then uh, I decided to maybe one day try it out myself. A journey that grew with his number one fan by his side. Uh, like mostly like my my dad, because you know um, he used to be a boxer too before. Uh, back in his day, even my uncle. Like I have a family full of like fighters, and um, yeah, and then my dad will like to. Uh, get me into it too. He helps me with uh, all my weightlifting stuff for, you know, uh, getting stronger, you know, building strength. Yeah, I'm sure he's proud of me because, you know, like he sees me working hard and I'm, I'm training, training hard. And, you know, he's, he's always there right by my side. Along with getting in quality time with his family, friends, and being a student at UOG, Austin has been putting in the work, showcasing his skill to represent Guam and his dad. As long as I put in like my hours and my time here at the gym and then I can I can pursue my career in this and hopefully like take as far as I can, like maybe UFC. All right, good luck out there. We'll be rooting for you. All right, NFL, we've got on TV 11, 4 a.m., the Giants going into Indianapolis to take on the Red Hot Colts. And then uh, at 7.25 a.m., also on TV 11, we've got the Steelers going into one of the best teams in the league, New Orleans. New Orleans might not have to play on the road again this postseason. Uh, then Sunday Night Football over on TV 8 at 11.15 a.m., the Chiefs at the Seattle Seahawks. Definitely going to be a tough game for both teams. Matson is in this community. We've been in this community for decades. We're going to be in this community for decades to come. Things will get busy, things will get quiet, but we're going to be here. We're your hometown carrier. And that matters to us. Reliability is the core of our business. We take pride in ensuring that we arrive in Guam on time as scheduled. It's our local employees who understand the market, who understand the business, and provide that hard work for you each and every day. When we hold ourselves to high standards, our customers also hold us to high standards. We establish good business relationships that turn into friendships. That's why it's so important to be here and be trusted by your customers. We want you to trust Matson like your friend, like your family. 
Shell's Million Miles giveaway is back, and we're giving 100,000 United Mileage Plus Miles to 10 lucky winners. So how do you make your getaway? Just use your Lucky 7 card when you fuel up with 7 gallons or more, and you're automatically entered to win. Fuel up at your nearest Shell station today and start planning your new adventure. No purchase necessary. Some conditions apply. See stores for details. GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's. We offer affordable.